there are particular highly influential molecules within our cells that stimulate the production of new mitochondria. One of the most influential is PGC1. PGC1 has a number of functions, but in this content, we'll be looking at some data on how different types of fats, including saturated fats and unsaturated fats, influence this molecule's presence in our cells. So check it out. Learn your body, a science-based education. As usual, this data comes from a study that I will have linked for you along with my more detailed notes and any minor amendments that need to be made after this releases. The researchers had a simple question. How do various fats that we eat in our food affect the levels of this molecule, PGC1, in muscle cells? PGC1 comes in a few varieties, with the most discussed being the alpha, so PGC1 alpha. Oh, if you're interested what PGC1 alpha stands for, it's peroxisome proliferating activated receptor gamma coactivator 1 alpha. So yeah, PGC1 alpha, if you don't mind. PGC1 alpha is highly increased during exercise, likely because it has a significant role in increasing mitochondria in the muscle cells. But beyond that, it also affects fat metabolism. Briefly, how does it do that? Well, it does it by interacting with other molecules within the cells that give it more specificity. For example, for mitochondrial biogenesis, that means creating more mitochondria in cells. It interacts with a protein called NRF, which leads NRF to move to the nucleus of the cell and express genes that hold the information from mitochondrial proteins. Alternatively, it can interact with a molecule known as PPAR, which will lead to a similar reaction as the molecules will move to the cell's nucleus and bind different genes. But these genes are responsible for increased fat metabolism, improving the cell's ability to use fat for fuel. So now that we have a background on how PGC1 affects two different vital systems within our cells, how do the fats that we consume in our diet affect its levels in our muscles? The researchers probed this question by snipping pieces of muscle from people and plating the tissue onto dishes. These dishes now have millions of human muscle cells, and the researchers then exposed them to a variety of fats, and then measured the amount of PGC1 present. They exposed the cells to three saturated fats individually, and found that none of them had any effect on PGC1 alpha gene expression meaning the information for the production of the PGC1-alpha protein has not been read and used for the construction of the protein more than normal. However, not so for the exposure to unsaturated fats, as mono and polyunsaturated fats led to an increase in the reading of PGC1-alpha gene. Taking it a step further, they measured mitochondrial activity under the same conditions and found similar results. Yet one of the saturated fats, stearate, decreased mitochondrial activity, while the others had no effect. Now, I should mention that the measurements of gene expression do not always translate to more of the molecule being produced, but assuming these increases are translated to real increases in PGC1-alpha protein, it does seem this may have an effect on mitochondria in muscle cells. I would like to see more evidence beyond this one experiment of mitochondrial activity, but both pieces of data begin to point to the type of fat mattering if exposed to the cells, with unsaturated fats being preferential for mitochondrial activity and saturated fats having mostly no negative effect except potentially stearate. So, your nutrition may matter for your mitochondria and your muscle quality, but more clinical measures are needed for that to be certain. With that, I hope this proved informative and I'll catch you in the future. Cheers.